Dish of Life. Yes, Dish of Life Extra. What is Dish of Life? This is a dish that makes life worth its living. It is a program on how to live your life to its utmost in health and lifestyle. It is a program that takes you step by step on how to prevent, manage, and remove diseases and other ailments from your system without lifelong usage of drugs or essential hospital attendance. Dish of Life Extra takes you from wherever you are to where you want to be in your health and lifestyle every Tuesday by 11 a.m. and a repeat broadcast on Saturday by 11 a.m. by your host, Dr. Samiyu Ola Golden. Nasrawa, Kogi, Kogi, Niger, Benue, Kaduna, and all the other states that are surrounding our federal capital territory here in Abuja, you're welcome to your every week later in preventive health education, Dish of Life Extra, coming to you from your number one community friendly radio station, Vision 92.1 FM. I am the regular host, Dr. Sebiu Ola. Coding. My people, last week we came here together and we discussed on the sweetness of low cost drugs and its after effects. Where are we? And when we discussed about it, we were able to know that really the sweetness that we, may, we get when we buy the drugs cheap, how we eat fake drugs usually come to hit us the moment the pain and agony begins. And we're able to teach each other what and where and how can we avoid those things. And if we are part of those who have been doing it, what can we do? And I remember telling everyone that was on the program that day that, look, the best area or the best form or the best way that you can avoid this type of a thing is preventive. When you are preventing something, then you know that that is the best cure that you have for that thing. That's why we all talk about prevention is better and cheaper and easier than cure. And it is also attainable by everyone. So we discuss about it, and we all agree on that. But today, what we're going to discuss is going to help us to see how we can prevent such attitude of going to look for the cheapest, looking for where you can maneuver, and looking for how you can get the person who is going to take you into the problem that you are trying to avoid. And we talked just sparingly about lifestyle changes. The thing that is everywhere now all over the world is about lifestyle changes for our health. A lot of people have heard about it, but it didn't make any sense to them. But then everybody takes it on the service value. This is that we are looking at it from. And when we talk about lifestyle changes in health, we are talking about those things that we are doing to ourselves that is damaging and worsening our health situation. We are all in, you know, our health is in progress. Nobody that is not in one state of minor, medium, or even major ill health. But majority try to you know, do the best they can in order not to negate whatever is the progress they make in making their health become stronger and better on each day. That's why when we talk about lifestyle changes, we're really talking about how our health can be stabilized, the bad one can be reversed, and the one that are not even that bad can be progressively better. 
So lifestyle, what are lifestyle changes that we have noticed that have actually affected us one way or the other? If you look at the way we eat today, food is one of our basic problems where we get our health into problems. A lot of people eat very, very unwholesome food today. Either unwholesome in the sense that it has already been, you know, infected or it has been polluted or it has been, even from the place where it was made, it was adulterated in order for the producers to make more profit. And there are some who, out of no conscience at all, just make chemicalized food and place them on the shelf for us. As long as it's sweet enough for us to eat or to drink, we just go for it without finding out the nitty-gritty of the content of what we are swallowing or what we are putting into our body. This is the reason why lifestyle changes for our health is one of the greatest things that has ever come in health today. Every doctor talks about it, irrespective of what is your brain or specialty, whether you are a general practitioner, you are a surgeon, you are an orthopedic surgeon, you are a plastic surgeon, whatever, you are a pediatrician, you are whatever is your field in medicine, lifestyle changes helps your patient. And for all of you out there, my brothers and sisters, who are listening to me, if you have a doctor that has not talked to you about lifestyle changes, please ask him, what is lifestyle changes? Which one am I, you know, going to change in order to, for you to be able to help me walk out of it? And as much as this thing helps, there are some modern diseases that even when you apply these lifestyle changes, I might not work. And I have always told people, don't look at things as if, okay, whenever I want to, I'm going to do it because I'm not just ready for that now. The irony is this. Maybe as at the time you get to have the knowledge, that is the time it's supposed to be useful for you. Because our body tends to follow the direction that we give it. Now, if you have any of the modern diseases, maybe out of the food you eat, out of your sedentariness, out of the fact that you are just the type of person who is every time depressed, and you think that, oh, whenever you drink a bottle of two, or whenever you smoke, or whenever you do this, you eat this type of thing or the other, then the two will go. No, my brothers and sisters, it will not go until you do the right thing to your body, your body is not going to help you to achieve anything. That is the essence of lifestyle changes. And when we talk about lifestyle changes, apart from food, we talk about other things that makes us to actually put our organs into problems. Excessive sedentariness. And when we talk about sedentariness, we're talking about people who are always sitting down in the same place, you know, the same place they will sit and be browsing, the same place they will sit and be looking at, you know, whatever they are looking at. And they even prefer to stay in the same place, you know, they, they will eat there, they will not stand up, they will still keep on watching TV or whatever what program they want to watch. Without knowing that excessive sedentariness, being in one place at, you know, the same time and continuously being there can actually weaken your bones, and your muscles. These things are created for you to move them. If you don't move your body, your joints will go into trouble. If you don't move your body, your bones will go into trouble. If you don't move your body, your muscles will. They will continue to wither away. And when you start noticing that, you know that you have gone too deep. But if whenever you get yourself the knowledge of changing the type of lifestyle that is killing you. Believe me, you, will, you can get it reversed to the position that you need. And that's the reason why we are discussing about why is it that some lifestyle changes 
don't even work. And one of the reasons why they don't is because people let it, you know, remain for so long. The damages in those organs have been there for so long and they might have reached a state of no return. They might have reached a state whereby no matter how much you try to change what you should have tried earlier, you might have gone into it too late. It's like somebody who has been smoking and they've been want to stop smoking, to stop, you know, doing all this so that you get better. You keep on seeing yourself, you know, wasting away. Yet you say, ah, no, 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 I can't stop this now until later. Then by the later, then something has started growing up. Probably a growth will start from somewhere very small. Okay, tomorrow I will stop. Next tomorrow I will stop. Before you know it, the growth has become cancerous. And by the time it becomes cancerous, even if you now try to stop that smoking, it's already too late. The dog has left the cage. And by that time, it becomes a, a, a very, very difficult situation to manage, even when you decide to change that lifestyle as at that time. When we tell you about sleeping, and you think that sleep is just for the lazy ones, no. The most hardworking people in the world, they can only eat the fruit of that their labor if they get to rest. A lot of people don't know the value of sleep in our lives. Sleep is one of the most healing properties that we have. And any time that we don't sleep enough, several different types of ailments come to our system. And it continues to damage. And if you don't know it, sleep is a healer on its own. So when you sleep very well, your body tends to heal itself. It tends to rest out that yesterday's excessive stress. And that is one of lifestyle changes. Because the lifestyle of not getting to sleep enough is a lifestyle that is not going to keep your organs in their right state. And by the time you keep doing that, on and on, before you know it, different things will start coming in. If an organ is diseased, from that place, that is that lack of sleep, you're going to find that that organ will start showing you what has happened to it. And if you don't stop on time, get solution to your sleeplessness, you will just find yourself in more bigger problems. Or are you the type of person who you are, you know, a hateful person, a very, very sad person in nature, Nothing makes you happy. Everything anybody does, you are sad about it. You will keep getting depressed. Because sadness does not go with normal body. Our body secretes certain hormones in our brain that is called happy hormones. You see, these hormones, when they don't get secreted because you are always sad, then they encourage the other side of your body. And then you start becoming depressed. Everything in life is against you. Nothing makes you even feel a little bit of what you want to feel. Everybody is the problem and you are not the one. The moment you have that type of a, a life, that everything that happens to you is somebody else that has done it, not you. You can't be happy. Because happiness... Is a self-inviting phenomenon. You invite happiness to your life. You express happiness for your life. Even express happiness for the things that others are happy for. That will also affect you. So that is also lifestyle. If you have lifestyle of always blaming others for your for your for your either for your mistakes or for your inactivity or for your own error, then that hormone will not be secreting from your brain. And so you will perpetually remain sad, depressed, and exhausted. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're doing that, you don't even know that you are using more than enough 
of the activities that you are supposed to keep at rest. And that means so much for the rest of the organs that need that same activity to make you feel better. Everything in life is created in two. And each of them, they are just opposite of one another. One another, we are talking about sadness and happiness now. Well, as far as I'm concerned, maybe to the little of the knowledge I have, if you are always somebody who is always too sad, you will never be happy. And if you are somebody who is always very happy, your sadness may not come. So, the truth about life is you have to find a medium place in between them. A holy book says, when you are sad, make sure your sadness does not get prolonged. While when you are happy, do not smile or do not laugh excessively. Because of the day, your sadness will come. So that you can know how to juggle between them because the life we live is a life that requires you to be able to live with both. If you are bent towards one side so much, you will never get the other side. And you never know how it feels to be on the other side. But when you have been able to put them in between the area where you can manage to juggle yourself and remain healthy, calm, honest with your surroundings, honest with yourself, and be able to give yourself the happiness that you need, then you understand. So, lifestyle changes is about looking into ourselves and into what are the things that we are doing that is not you know, going well with our body, with our mind, with our system, that is now bringing us all manners of sicknesses and ill health. And at the end of the day, some people think there is medicine, there is tablet, there is injection for every problem that they have. No, my brothers and sisters, there is nothing like a tablet for sadness. No. There is nothing like there is a tablet to change the type of food that you eat. No. There is nothing like, oh yes, they say that if I'm too fat, if I just take that, I'll get, you know, reduced. No. If you use such tablet, you are only postponing the days of evil. There is no tablet or injection that can turn you from sedentary human being to you now being active and being able to use your body. There is none. Everything that has to do with life, life, lifestyle changes depends on you as an individual. When you get the knowledge or the wisdom out of it, it now depends on you to work with it. It depends on you to make it function in you. So that that thing that they told you is going to change your situation can start manifesting in you. But that is the only way. There is no amount of uh, effort a doctor, a nurse, or any healthcare worker can put into you changing your lifestyle that can be the same as the effort you will put into it. Habit is a very, very dangerous thing. And when you form a dangerous habit about your health, then nobody can help you. It's only you that can help yourself. Imagine me now coming to your house every morning to say, look, have you eaten your fruits? One day you lock your door and you won't allow me in because you are not interested. But if you are interested, even when you are finished eating at your house, you'll be calling me to tell me that, ah, doctor, look, I have taken my, break, my breakfast this morning and this is what I have taken over. Just to show how happy you are about the outcome of you changing that your, you know, nutrition. Because if you say you are always weak, the first thing I ask my patient is if you are always weak. I ask you, what do you eat? A lot of them say, ah, I eat balanced diet. And by the time you hear what that balanced diet is, ah, you will be shocked that there is nothing balanced. In fact, it is so imbalanced, the person may always, may, can always fall down right in front of you. Because balanced diet does not mean piling protein, carbohydrate, you know, fat, 
water and the minerals together. Ah, uh-uh. it means knowing which one is good for you, knowing where to use them, how to use them, what quantity to use. All these things will determine what this so-called balanced diet means to your body. A lot of people think that eating balanced diet means as long as there is carbohydrate there, there is protein there, there is fat there, there is other minerals there. Yeah, the food is balanced. But there are so many balanced diets that are killing our organs today. So many because we are eating the wrong types or we are avoiding the good ones. And or even after eating the balanced diet, we are spoiling the balanced diet with another thing that is not balanced. You can imagine somebody who has eaten good fruit and vegetable, and the next thing he wants to do is to drink a bottle of you know soft drink on it because he said are they not the same? After all, they taste alike. Yes, alike. It's not the same. If it is not Panadol, you remember things people say. It can never be panadol. That is what it is. When you don't eat the right food, even if it tastes the same, it is not the same. So you find that lifestyle changes is just what everybody needs. If you want to stop spending your money recklessly on tablets, that is not going to change your life. That is not going to change your ill health. You better now start approaching lifestyle changes. And when you approach it, hold it tight and do the best that you can out of it. Whenever we're talking about lifestyle changes that has to do with sedentariness, exercise, people will say, hey, I'm going into the gym. No, you are wrong. If you want to change your sedentary life, it does not mean you have to go to the gym. When you're going into the gym, you're going into the gym to to compete with somebody else. And that is the machine that you are in the gym to compete with. And when you are, you know, competing with the machines, then you cannot go and compete with that person who you think you are better than. But when you are trying to become healthy, in terms of exercise, you need to be healthy. You are only competing with one person. And that is yourself. You are trying to be the best of who you are. You are trying to better yourself every day so that you can be the best as you continue to better your today, tomorrow. Apart from that, going to the gym is for only athletes. The people that want to compete, want to entertain and be able to give people what they want to see. But if it is for you to remain healthy, gym is not your priority. It's not your even number five or six thing to do in order to remain healthy. So, this is what I am telling you today. Another thing that does not make lifestyle you know, changes work is the way we take it. A lot of people will start their lifestyle changes Within a few days, they'll give up. When you give up midway, it becomes a difficult thing to start again. Because by the time you give up, or maybe you say, ah, tomorrow I will start again. Tomorrow will come and something will keep you from starting. Okay, another tomorrow I'll start again. No, another tomorrow will come, you won't start. Then your body will keep on accepting the fact that you don't, you don't want to do it. And it will just keep encouraging you not to do it. So, by the time it's encouraging you not to do it, you yourself will find a reason why you're not doing it. You find a reason why you should just sit down and then stand up for a minute, a moment, you go and sit down again and say, hey, after all, this one too is exercise. No. The same thing goes with sleep. You say that, hey, I was sleeping for only three hours before. Now I'm sleeping for four hours. That's enough. It's not. In human hours, you should sleep at night. It should be between 6 and 7 hours. And that is for those who are in the elderly age group. The lower your age is, the more sleep that you need. Because you have, you know, wiped your system. 
during the day, the younger you are, the more you are able to move around, the more you are able to use all parts of your organs. And so, that organ need more restful time for you to be able to recover for the following day. So don't say because Dr. Lark Golden said the minimum hours of sleep you need is six to seven hours. So what a big deal. If I take five hours, I'm nearer to the six. Uh-uh. Or if I take six hours, I'm nearer to the seven. No. Give yourself that sleep that your body will thank you for. And if you are the one that you are you are good at drinking and smoking. And somebody told you that, don't mind them. It is all about, you know, just resting. Tell the person that you are not that person. Your own body is about being okay, being healthy, so that you can be more productive. That is what it is all about. It's not about, eh, Shebi, if I can wake up in the morning and go for my work. Supposing when you get to that work, you are not able to do what you are there to do. So what is the essence of coming to work? So all these things are the things that are needed to be you know, considered whenever you find yourself in such situation. When you are sick and you know what is wrong with you, the first thing you look for is how do I get around this? Today, another thing that does not make our lifestyle changes work is the new technologies that we are all clamoring for. AI, artificial intelligence, general intelligence, and so on. We are so enamored with the positive size of artificial intelligence. How many people have been asking questions about the negative side? When I started this program this morning, I said God created everything opposite, in pairs. Good, bad, white, black, tall, short, and so on. Has anybody asked of the beauties that this artificial intelligence has been producing for us? Oh, autonomous cars. Yeah, we can, you know, get answers within seconds. Have you asked at what cost to you and your system? Do you know how much radiation this artificial intelligence irradiates. Do you know how much heat it, it releases into the system, into the environment? Do you know how much that is even existent touches you as a human being? Oh, the only thing that I will complain about that, oh, um, artificial intelligence will replace uh, drug drivers. It will replace, you know, secretaries. It will replace even sometimes doctors. It will replace no, 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 no. It's not just that. There are more prices to pay than just those things. And you're seeing that you're now so happy and you are very, very, you give, you go into any, any one of them. You throw caution to the wind about them because you want to use them. We need to find out what are the things that are the other side of it. The people who produced it, they have never shied away from telling the truth, but only those who ask will get answers. It is not just about, eh, but they did not tell us that. Why should they tell you? They are not responsible to you to tell you. The only thing they are responsible for is their own productivity. They have brought out what you like, what you want, what you will pay for. Oh, the richest person in the world today is at the forefront of AI, isn't it? Are you still asking how did he become the richest man in the world? Oh, you didn't. But you didn't ask again. Why is it that those, those people that were the richest yesterday, they are no longer the richest again? You think that uh, if it is easy, Every cat, every horse will have loved to fly. Think about that and you'll be able to understand what we're saying about the another thing that does not let your lifestyle changes to work for you. So, it is not just enough for you to embrace 
every new technology. Because there are certain things about them that is not easy to tell so that they can be utilized. Because the people who produce them, they didn't produce them just for, for fashion or for, for, for you to just, you know, watch them. It is about making progress in their mind. Giving you what you want, not what you don't want. So they cannot be telling you that, okay, oh, my AI can do this for you. But um, if you use it for so-so, this will happen, that will happen. Oh, nobody will go near it. But you need to know, if you go to a hospital and you present your problems to the doctor, the nurse, or whoever you're presenting to, and they are not able to explain to you, and then you go away with it, are you going to come back and now say, when that thing does not work for you, you now come back and say, you did not explain. Does he know whether you need explanation? The best he could give you or she could give you what, what he or she gave. It is your responsibility to ask questions because it is your life. It is your only possession, bigger and better and without it, no other possession. So don't just dump your life in the hands of somebody else and believe that he doesn't have his own life except your own. If you are engaging him or her, you can only get what you ask. You can only get what you demand for. If you say you are having headache and I decide to give you medicine for headache and then you go away, then tomorrow you come and say, oh, no, neck is not paining you. Of course. It was not my fault that you didn't tell me neck was paining you yesterday. I treated you for what you asked me to treat you for. But if you had asked me yesterday, hey, doctor, this headache, can it make neck pain me? Because I still have a little neck pain. Oh, oh you have brought it out. The doctor said, yes, it can. And this is the way it will. But in the view of that, this is what you should do. It's the same thing with the new technologies that we are all embracing. We have to be very careful about the way we embrace them. Because they all have the other side that we may not know now and we may never know if we don't ask. But for the lifestyle changes, believe me, they have, they have a lot to do with how your lifestyle changes may not help you. Now, finally, you see, unfortunately for us, there are so many things coming out so fast that majority of those even have enough time to be able to, you know, catch up with it. Many people are now attentively glued to either TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, that, that, that book, that this, all manners of things that carries our attention away. But how much of that your time of affection, attention do you actually benefit from? Are you learning anything from all those attention that you are giving away free of charge? No, because you don't know that the attention that you are giving ought to be repaid back by what you learn from those attention. What you gain out of that attention that you give, every minute attention you give is a very highly cost, costly situation that you find yourself. So you need to gain and benefit out of the attention that you give. That is the essence. That's why the people who own those applications pay those who create the content. They pay them for your attention. So what do you gain out of the attention that you, you pay for with your data and they pay them for the, with the money that they pay them for that attention that they got from you? So if you don't do that, even when you want to have lifestyle changes, you don't because you are glued to that, you know, technology. We're talking about sedentariness, and you don't know that that can make you sedentary. 
No, you don't need, you know, anybody to explain that to you because you can sit down for three, four hours glued to any of those applications that I've just said. But they don't know how much they are damaging in their body. And this is very important for everyone to know. In order to know that when we talk about lifestyle changes, it also includes our lifestyle in terms of our attention on various applications. It is not just enough for you to go along on the, on the road and be, and be looking at whatever you are seeing on your screen. When accident happens, it's not the person alone. You are culpable because you are the one who is not paying attention before something else came across you. So lifestyle changes is all about being able to eat well, live well, sleep well, relate well. You see, in relationship, which is the last part I'm going to talk about because of time, relationship with other people is one of the biggest areas that you can have your mental health stabilized. If nobody is as wise as you, you are a problem. To yourself. If nobody is as foolish as you, of course that is natural. You are a bigger problem. When I say it that way, I want you to understand what I'm saying. It is not every argument that you should win. Because when you keep winning every argument with your friends, they will start avoiding you. If you keep hating them every time, you won't have friends again. If you cannot accept to agree on something until another day when you are going to discuss it further, you will not have anyone to disagree with you. So they will see you as on your own. Because nobody will want to argue with you. Nobody will want to even teach you what they know. Because they know you are too wise for their own liking. Relationship amongst each other is the reason why a lot of people get some sort of mental problems that has no solution. It's part of lifestyle changes. And if you cannot change that in yourself, then there's trouble. If you cannot listen to others before you, you bring your own idea, you are a problem to yourself. If you cannot examine other people's view, this and this your own, then you are a big problem to yourself. You will damage yourself. You will damage others because the words that will be coming out of your mouth to them will be damaging them. Some people's words affect them more than Cain. Some people can commit suicide with the words that emanated from other people's mouths. This is the reason why relationship is one of those things if yours is not good enough, Learn how to perfect it. Learn how to give so that you can take. Because in life itself, it's about give and take. If you keep giving and giving and giving, you become poor. If you keep taking and taking and taking, they will become poor. Then all of you will become poor. So it's about giving and taking. When you give, somebody else will give. When you take, somebody else will take, and then you become a stable person. And that is another aspect of lifestyle changes. I have mentioned to you today four different types of lifestyles that you can look into your own and decide to either change it or leave it the way it is because it is your life, isn't it? Well, but your life can affect others' life. If somebody has mental illness, he can decide to destroy another life because he or she doesn't know what he or she was doing. So, the reason why we come on Vision 92.1 FM is to make society better in all ramifications. In your health, in your relationship, in your sleep, in your everything, in the food you eat, so that you can be a better person in the society, be a more productive person in the society and be somebody 
who is going to improve another people's life. Why is or our own life is also improving? That's why we give. So that we can also take. This is the reason why we are brought to this topic. And I will give you some few minutes because we still have about 10 more minutes to go to be able to discuss about what you know you feel about what you have discussed this morning. Has there been any of your lifestyle changes that you have not thought about? Are there any of these chronic illnesses that is still bedeviling you or you have not been able to see which of your lifestyle, life, lifestyle changes that can help that disease to go away? We want to hear from you. The number is 091-677-09564. 091-677-09564. That is the number you can call and you can be part of this program and you can be part of a health society. And as long as you are healthy, we are happy and we are also healthy because the more the happiness in the society, the more people that will share out of the, the produce or the product of such happiness. So the number again is 091-677-09564. That's the number you can call. I will be able to, you know, hear you, discuss with you, and be able to, you know, offer solution or we look from other contributors for the solution that you might need. So, uh, we'll, we'll stop a little bit now for a minute and be able to come back after this time out. Dish of Life. Yes, Dish of Life Extra. What is Dish of Life? This is a dish that makes life worth its living. It is a no, program on how to live your life to its utmost in health and lifestyle. It is a program that takes you step by step on how to prevent, manage and remove diseases and other ailments from your system without lifelong usage of drugs or isocyanate hospital attendance. Dish of Life Extra takes you from wherever you are to where you want to be in your health and lifestyle every Tuesday by 11 a.m. and a repeat broadcast on Saturday by 11 a.m. by your host, Dr. Samiyu Ola Golden. Welcome back from that short break. We have been discussing this morning about lifestyle changes, their effect on our lives, on the society, and on our total health. And we have been talking about how some of these lifestyle changes could fail because of the way we are protected. And each of the lifestyle changes that we have discussed this morning, be it the nutritional aspect, the the exercise, the sleep, the, the relationship, and then the way that we attach ourselves to the you know, new technology. All of them, we have been able to see how they can affect us in the ways and manners that we don't even expect. Now that we have that knowledge now, and we are able to see the wisdom in it, the understanding which should be easy. It should be easy in such a way that you cannot look into yourself and say, where am I concerned? Where has it impacted me? What am I doing wrong? Why is it that this particular problem I'm having is not going in spite of so much medicine that I've tried, in spite of so much effort that I've put in? Is there any type of lifestyle changes that I have not been able to do or have not been able to do it well? That's the reason why we brought the topic. I'm sorry we didn't have enough time today because I think we have only a few minutes to go and uh, we are not going to beat the time. But I'm going to continue next week, God willing. So until next week when I come your way again, 
to continue where we are just stopping today. And until then, it has been me, Dr. Ola Golden Semiu, saying, keep healthy, keep productive, stay away from stressful situations. Bye.